the U.S. military, and specifically the U.S. Army, has a major problem right now. And to be very honest with you folks, I'm not sure it's solvable without a complete and total revamp of how we defend this country. Everything the military is trying right now to make up for these recruiting shortfalls, these major recruiting shortfalls, is actually having the opposite of the intended effect. It's making the problem worse. And they don't know what to do. They're flummoxed. Now, I'm going to break this down for you guys in today's video, but it comes down to basically one thing. It's a battlefield of the mind. Earlier today, over at the Communities tab, <coughs> pardon me, I put up this picture. It was something I saw in passing that reminded me of something way back in the 80s and 90s. Anybody who's ever spent any amount of time in the weight room knows that it's you versus you. It's really your own mind that you have to conquer. You've got to be able to push past the pain. You've got to be able to be okay with being in pain, knowing that you have a greater goal and that the pain is worth it. Now, battlefield of the mind sometimes gets misconstrued. You see, you can be fighting in your mind against a physical goal or against a mental one. Sometimes you can overthink things and think that the more you think about it, the better it's going to get. Sometimes that's the exact opposite of what you need to do. Now, we talk about this a lot over at the Florida Monkey Patreon channel. It's only one US dollar per month over there. That's it. Even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. Partnering with Vimeo, we can take the gloves off. And we can talk about things and show things in a way that make it clearer, that really hit home, that the censors don't like here in public. Now, the military has some major shortfalls that they've been trying to fill in because they know that in the future, we're going to have some peer-to-peer -peer conflicts and we just don't have enough people. But the problem is that the group of people they're recruiting from just are not qualified to serve. The looming national security crisis, young Americans unable or unwilling to serve in the military. 71% of young Americans between 17 and 24, remember that age, 17 and 24, are ineligible to serve in the U.S. military. <coughs> that means 24 of 34 million people can't join even if they wanted to. Now, recently, last two days, the U.S. Army has put out a brand new video called Ghosts in the Machine 2, trying to recruit people to psychological operations in the military. Now, I want you to think about that for just a minute. PSYOPs. An 18-year-old looking at a video, video like this, and here was the first one two years ago called Ghosts in the Machine Psy War, and here's the second one, and basically it's the idea of using thoughts and images to convey messages to manipulate people. Now, to the average 18-year-old, that sounds like, golly, that sounds like a good job. I can get all of those military benefits and never get hot, never get sweaty, never get dirty, um, never have to do a bunch of push-ups. I mean, why would somebody in psychological operations need to be able to do 100 sit-ups or 100 push-ups or run four miles? Why? That sounds like my kind of job, right? You see, that's what the military doesn't get. The more they do stuff like this, the more they try to push for people who would want to be in psychological operations, the bigger their problem is going to be. When you're in the military, and back me up down in the comments, guys. I know I have a lot of military guys that follow this channel. <coughs> the challenge of the military 
is getting your mind to a place where you can embrace more suck than the next guy. That's all it's about. You're not going to be the first one to complain. You're not going to be the first one to fall out. Even though you are tired all the time, you are hungry all the time, you are in pain 99% of the time, if you're in jungle warfare like I was, you are always wet, you always smell bad, everything is soaked, there are bugs places that you didn't even know you had, you are scraped up, you are burned, you are just in a state of constant misery, but you put it out of your mind and you do the job. Now, back in the 80s, one of the biggest films that got guys into the military was Predator. <coughs> now, of course, everybody's familiar with the meme. The Carl Weathers, Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, handshake where they have the little uh, mid-air arm wrestling match. But one thing you learn after you go through the initial phases of training and you get into the military, that you're, ass, you're an asset. You're, it doesn't matter whether you're special forces, it doesn't matter where you cook, what your job is, you are an expendable asset. And most of the time, what makes you a good soldier is that you just don't give a shit anymore. You're, wait, what, what do you mean you don't? You don't give a shit. You're like, fine, I mean, bad shit happens, fine. Kill me now. Kill me now. They want, to de they want to deploy? No problem. Absolutely no. Kill me now. This is what waking up in the military is like every morning. It's exactly what it's like. If this, to be honest, if this creature from the predator, the make-believe creature, had encountered a real military, a real military platoon, they would have ripped into shreds. Just because he was an impediment to getting back home. Wait, what? Yes. You see, this this guy wouldn't have lasted a day. Because he was an impediment to getting back to air conditioning, to clean clothes, to something warm to wrap your arms around, hint, hint. Because believe me, that's the first thing military guys do. It's one of the biggest psyops out there is that military guys love being in the military. <clears throat> that it's just, you wake up every morning and gosh, things are just so cool and awesome and fun and we're hardcore and all that. No. If you've got a chopper to get to, you get to the chopper. The, the minute you're off duty, the minute you're off duty, you are out of uniform. And you are heading someplace warm and clean, and cool, and quiet, and cuddly. You see, when I see this, when I see pictures like this, to me it's embarrassing. Sitting there, in uniform, with your hands full of fast food. It's like you don't, you don't even try in the military, while you're on duty, to even entertain the idea of fun or happy or cool because you're on duty it's your job to be miserable it's your job to be miserable when you're off duty that's when you have fun i mean think of all these kids now they're coming in the military and they're thinking that yeah we're gonna have to do a little bit of this a little bit of that Some, you know, but most of the time it's going to be like a regular, regular day. And we're going to be in air conditioning and sitting in front of computers and surfing on our smartphones and all this. It's if they lead them to believe this, if military recruiting leads them to believe this, they're making their own problem. I mean, when they come in, they get shell shocked by these guys in around Browns that are mostly infantry guys. Some are engineers, but mostly, mostly infantry guys. And they're completely dumbfounded about why something else is being expected of them than what they thought they signed up for. This is Defense Post, uh, April 30th, 2024. 
U.S. Army urged to prepare for jungle warfare. There's nothing more miserable. Now, you ready for this? Fort Florida Maquis, do you have any proof? Do you have any proof that the military is literally screwing itself? Screwing itself by its own recruiting techniques? Yes, I do. Friday, May 3, Fort Jackson trainee dies at Army basic training. Now, fairly rare occurrence. You know what else is a really rare occurrence? A PFC in basic training. <coughs> Pardon me. In the Army, a PFC is somebody who's been promoted twice. You don't get promoted twice in basic training. You don't get promoted at all in basic training. Everybody's an E1. Once in a while, somebody will get some kind of a bonus for maybe getting a buddy to sign up, and they'll give them E2, when they, which means one stripe. But PFC, no. But wait till you hear this. It gets better. A trainee at Army Basic Combat Training at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, died on, Mon died on Monday, according to a statement from Base Public Affairs. PFC, <coughs> sorry, pardon me, Veronica Wynn, 39, with 3rd Battalion, 13th Infantry Regiment, became unresponsive during, quote, structured and disciplined pickup in the company area. 39 in boot camp 39 years old a 39 year old female in boot camp you've got to be kidding me this is what boot camp should look like okay I know I'm going to get a lot of sexist comments out there and that's fine this is what a group out of boot camp should look like See, there's a lot of drill instructors out there right now that if you said, hey, drill, drill sergeant, over there on that other side of that block wall, <coughs> there's a bunch of soldiers out of uniform. You need to go do something about that. Now, I guarantee if that drill sergeant went around that block wall with his attitude, and this is what he ran into, he probably wouldn't say a word. Probably wouldn't say one word. He might ask politely, who's a senior man here you might take him aside and say hey you know i get it's a hot day you guys are you know on duty you're doing what you you know got to do um do we think we could at least get back in t-shirts i mean could we possibly get that done we have some folks that are you know kind of karens over there and you know they're a little upset about the uh, the uniform standard so that'd be about it nobody would be getting yelled at nobody would be getting screamed at why because you take one look, one look at this group of guys, and you see a group of guys that are very much acquainted with the concept of pain. You don't look like this without spending a great deal of time in pain and working out and running and working out some more and running some more and being miserable. Why? Because that's their job. And that's the problem the military has. 13 minutes and 49 seconds in. The problem is, right now, we have a military that is trying to build up a force that isn't acquainted with pain. That isn't okay with being in pain. I pulled up this picture because I thought it was quite ironic. You see these guys right here? This is special operations. This is psychological operations from Operation Just Cause, 1989. Do any of these guys look like they give a flying fuck about being happy today? No. They don't give one rat's ass about you know feeling good. They're going to go get their job done, whatever that is. And they're going to do it tomorrow. And they're going to do it as long as they're on duty. But believe me, when these guys are off duty... You're not going to get them anywhere near a uniform. You're not going to get them anywhere near anything that's green. Because this is what they do for fun. This is what they do for fun. 
have a race up the side of a Rocky Mountain carrying a log. I saw this video and I just about fell out of my chair. <clears throat> Sorry about the voice, guys. It's almost back. This guy, now I'm not, not picking on Christopher Chaos here. Um, it's a military channel here on YouTube. The title of the video is Explaining Morning PT in the Army. Let me say this again. Explaining Morning PT. What needs explaining? It's an 11 minute and 42 second video. It's self-explanatory. Morning. As opposed to middle of the day or nighttime. PT. Physical training. Basically all the ingredients needed for misery. If you look up Betty Crocker recipe for misery, that's what you're going to need. First thing in the morning, getting out of the rack, going out, and rolling around and doing flutter kicks and push-ups and sprints and doing all this shit and getting dirty and sweaty. Morning PT. Like that needs explained. See, you show pictures like this and they make for great photo ops. They really do. But every guy in this picture, every guy in this picture isn't thinking, gosh, how cool am I? Gosh, how awesome is this? I wish I could crawl into this filthy, disgusting, nasty sewer of a swamp every day because, gosh, it makes me look so cool. Not one of them is thinking that. <coughs> Not one of them is thinking that. And when they see a picture like this used for recruiting, half of them want to laugh and half of them want to puke. They're like, if they only knew how miserable I was, if they only knew absolutely how unbelievably miserable I was. That's why you don't see a lot of actual military guys in these pseudo survival groups. I'm always really suspicious about these guys that say, oh, I was this and that and the other in the military. And then they go on about how they're, they're part of this uh, end of days or end of the world survival group that's going to go run out in the middle of the forest and play tactical camping as if it's some kind of great thing. Anybody who's been in the military hated it. We all hated it. We did it. It was our job. That's why it was called serving. But we wouldn't do it voluntarily. Go out there when we had any other option. And trying to go live out in the middle of bug infested swamp or forest just because it makes us feel like we're independent. It's horse shit. The first thing you want to do, and every military guy, t t tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. The first thing you want to do when you get off duty is you want to get under a hot shower. You want to strip off all that crap and all that garbage, and you want to just stand under a shower. And get clean. And then you want to get something cold to drink. Eventually, probably something with some alcohol in it. Eventually. And everybody, and I'm just going to show the picture, I don't care. This is the next thing you want to do. Now, I am talking about 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, that era. Those are your priorities. And as fast as you can, you want to forget you're even in the military. This is all you want to do. Enjoy your weekend or whatever time you have before you have to go back and crawl into some mess of some nonsense that gets you just miserable again, over and over again. And believe me, when you have a chopper to get to, you get to it. Go look up all of the uh, the memes and the pictures about guys looking forward to the day they get their DD-214. There's nobody that gets their DD-214, that's your discharge paper, by the way, and looks at it and says, oh, you know what? Gosh, I miss the military already. 
man, I think I should, I should rethink this. Nobody says that. They look at that thing and they smile for a week. And those next few months after being out are the best ever. You have a little bit of nostalgia. Yeah, but you're not going back. Why? Because it's miserable. And I'm going to say this again. This creature, I don't care whether it could be invisible or not. I don't care how big it was. If it was an actual military platoon whose whole mission was kill this guy and you get to go back home and go, go off duty, this thing wouldn't have stood a chance. It wouldn't have stood a chance. Try to get between a military platoon of surly, hungry, nasty, dirty, angry young men and their booze and their women and their food. You won't last five seconds. But one thing's for sure, that's not why this guy joined the military. He didn't think he'd ever have to be hot or dirty or sweaty or any bit of it. And that's the problem. So, I'll leave it there. Battlefield of the mind. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all of you who have joined us over the Patreon channel. Making a huge difference. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.